Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Paul Mackay from Analog Wonderland and I'm here once again with a film review. Today it is going to be a really fun one, Ilford SFX 200, which is a premium film because it is an infrared film. So we're going to talk all about what that means, what you can expect when you shoot with it, and if there's anything you can use as well with your camera that will bring out the effect even more. Spoiler alert, there is. Whether you are new to film photography or a long-time analog enthusiast, our channel covers all things film, from tips and tricks, film reviews, to how-to videos. Subscribe now and keep those notifications turned on so that you never miss a beat. Happy shooting. So SFX 200 is infrared. Now, before we get into this film in particular, I want to talk a little bit about infrared. First of all, I'm going to cover the pronunciation <laughs> because it's written infrared. And the last time we talked about an infrared film, there was a lot of debate in the YouTube comments about whether I was doing it wrong or not, which is always a great question to ask. And in this case, I think, it, I can't remember which way around it came. But infrared, so if you think about the light spectrum, you have everything from red to violet. And outside of the violet stage, there is ultraviolet light and outside the red stage there is infrared. Now it did come about called that way because ultraviolet is more than violet and infrared comes from Latin something. Infra is like under or below. So it's meant to be below red, above violet. So it is infra hyphen red. But these are the Victorians. I think they called them calorific light at one point as well, just for fun. Then it got shortened to infrared. Long story short, call it what you want. Just know that it is outside the normal range of visible light. So if it's outside the normal range of visible light, how can we see it? Well, this is the beauty of this film. This film can see wider than we can, but when you develop it, it will show us the results in a way that our eyes can see. So when you're using this and capturing infrared light and then developing it, you are seeing things that are not visible to the naked eye, a bit like Stranger Things, I assume. I haven't watched it. I hear it's great. What does this mean? So it means that this film will, however, also capture everything in the visible light. So you can put this in your camera, expose it at 200, crack on, and you'll get really nice photos with a load of detail, um, really crisp, load and load of fine, fine, fine resolution. So you get some really lovely black and white photos. They will look probably a little bit flat, not too contrasty, not too crazy. And that is it. Now, of course, if that's it, that's brilliant. But really, it's missing out on the, the super trick. If you put a dark red filter in front of your lens when you shoot, what this filter does is this strips out a lot of the visible light. You will then notice, because it's darkened the lens, if you're shooting through an SLR or something, you'll notice you'll have to open up the aperture or increase the shutter timing in order to capture more light because it's stripping out a load of light. Obviously, you hold that over, that looks very dark. But what this red filter allows is it allows all of the infrared light to pass through untouched. So instead of this film picking up visible and invisible infrared light, and therefore the print looks pretty normal, it strips out the normal light or a lot of the normal light, leaving you with much more of the infrared light. And that leads to some absolutely beautiful results. So you will see in the examples that we're showing here, foliage looks super dramatic. Uh, water and light bouncing off water can look incredibly interesting. Things that are man-made versus things that are natural have totally different looks than visible light. And that's because obviously nature sees infrared light as another energy source. The fact that our human eye is compressed into this area doesn't mean that's all the useful energy that the sun produces. So things that are natural, foliage and certain birds and animals can also see in infrared. They're using more of the spectrum and then things that bounce off will be totally different. So you'll be able to see the world in a genuinely different way if you use it with a red filter. The other thing that people love to use with red filters in infrared is if you shoot at a nice sky that has a bit of beautiful fluffy clouds, like, you know, the Toy Story wallpaper, it'll really ramp up the contrast. So if you're thinking of the typical perfect postcard infrared shot, you're thinking a winding river, loads of trees with loads of leaves and bushes, and then a nice bright sky with beautiful fluffy clouds floating along. You shoot this with this, the photo you'll get will be absolutely out of this world. You can use something a bit less dramatic, so you can sort of 
hit somewhere between with a, a yellow filter, that will still do part of the job, but it won't be quite as dramatic. People also say that, for example, if there's a bit of haze, if you look across a landscape, haze will block a lot of the higher frequency, like ultraviolet light out. UV will still penetrate quite well, so you'll be able to see better detail on hazy days. Again, that's something that you might not notice in normal day-to-day -day shooting, but really stands out. The other fun thing to do is to point it at people's faces with the filters on and see how someone's face will look in infrared versus other, which is a wonderful exercise to do if you've never done it before. So there's lots of opportunities for something a little bit creative. If you shoot it without filters, it'll be subtly different, but not mind-blowingly different. I would really encourage you to invest in a filter. Now, what I have here is a slotting filter. You, you buy sort of an adapter that sits on top of your lens, very common for like the Canons and the OMs and things. And then these slot in and out. And the reason it's done that is because then if you have a narrow lens or a wide lens, it all it all works with the same filter converter. You can also buy obviously the screw on lens filters that you might have seen before. Or if you don't have the money or inclination to invest in an actual filter, you can pick up something from a craft shop or a stationery shop, anything that is dark red, but you can still see something through. That's what you're aiming for to, to play with the effect. So loads of creative opportunity. You could even do something where you have half and half if you wanted to see on the same frame, etc., etc. Really, really go wild. I mean, the advice from Ilford is that definitely use a filter if you want to see any difference. The dark red will make the clouds really beautiful. Yellow is still nice and subtle, as we've talked about. They also say that it really loves bright light. So that's bright sunshine, which at the moment is wonderful, or studio lighting will also bring out the very best of this film because it has a huge amount of quality, can render a huge amount of detail. If you look at our reviews, Phoebe Lana very kindly has reviewed this and says that she loves it for portraits. It brings out a wonderful contrast, a punchiness, but still has enough subtlety to bring out the detail as well. So it's likely to be a little bit more dramatic looking than an HP5 or a Kodak T-Max, but without being so over the top that you just get sort of the blockiness. Really nicely nuanced she finds for shooting portraits. So there we go. A film that on its own is a fantastic black and white film that can use the fact that it sees more than visible light to add a little bit of nuance to landscapes to portraits or one that can be paired with a really strong filter in order to deliver great results. And by the way, this is again, just goes to show you how much fun black and white film is. Black and white film, obviously orthochromatic, so it sees across the spectrum, but using different colors over the top materially impact the way that it looks. If you've never thought about it in that way before, it's quite uh, mind blowing. But of course, the more you get used to these films, the more you'll realize how much those other choices can make. So please do have a load of fun. Personally, I'm gonna use my film from my Wonder Box to shoot landscapes. It is the perfect time of year with all the foliage. It's the perfect time with all the bright sunshine. I've said that it'll probably rain when I go out with my film, but never mind. I'm sure at some point in the next few months, I'm gonna find 36 exposures of that sunny landscape with my red filter in order to enjoy. Hope you have fun. Please do let us know how you like it. Any top tips for anyone else, and we'll see you again soon.